Hey, what is up guys? My name is Guillaume. Welcome back to Thomas Guitars and Basses and this very, very special day where I have the giant with a beanie. The giant Gregory, with a beanie. Gregory Cock, Mr. Greg Cock, Mr. Greg Cock on the channel. Uh, it's a pleasure being here. Thanks for having me. It's going to be fun. I think so. Do you want to jam? Let's do it. Woo! Pick a key, any key. E is good. E. <laughs> Magical, <laughs> magical activities. Give me the chills. Rock 'em sock 'em robots. Oh Rock 'em sock 'em robot. Push, pish, posh. <laughs> uh, my, 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 one of my best friends here is making a band with his two twins. They're respected, well, both five years old, and their band is called the Robot Snakes. The I, Robot Snakes. I think it's the snakes. coolest band. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> but yeah, hi everyone. My name is Guillaume. This is Mr. Great Cart here on the channel today. I'm very excited to have you here. Well, and, it's a pleasure uh, being here. Thanks for having me. Enjoy some grizzle. As you guys will have noticed at this point, probably uh, we also recorded a bunch of performances from the uh, Cock Marshall Trio. Yes. Right here in the studio, in this very setup. This very lair. Uh, we'll sprinkle some of that onto the interview. The rest will be a standalone video that you can enjoy without having me on screen, basically. <laughs> and just enjoy some good. Uh, good old music and gristle and blues and rock and all the good things. Yes, the stew, if you how, will. How, how are you and how did you land in our beautiful uh, Bavaria? Well, <laughs> you know what? It's been a while since we've been over here because of a little thing called COVID-19. give it up. And uh, so we had a couple trips planned and of course we had to reschedge yeah. because of the pestilence yes. that was infiltrating our lands. And uh, so we had this tour booked um, and hopefully, and I mean, thankfully it all transpired. So we just got here two nights ago. And our typical thing is we land in Frankfurt on, uh, um, in, in the morning and then play in a Schaffenberg in, in the night. That's so, the thing, that's, a, that's tradition. That's kind point. of our move. Okay. And um, it's always interesting because that first night you're a little jet lag, but that makes the, uh, cause I tend to stay up. Yeah. And then, so I'm a little, <laughs> Well, uh, a coffee. little off kilter, but that makes it. I makes it makes the humor and the music better. I yeah, think. Definitely, definitely. You've been on point today, so I'm, I, I have full faith in. Uh, oh, well, thank in, you. Uh, in you running off three coffees and. Uh, well, we've been touring a lot with the band, so we're uh, <laughs> we're kind of dialed in. So even if we're tired and don't know where we are, at least we kind of go on autopilot when the music starts. So that's that's a good thing. That's a really good thing. Uh, just in case you guys are watching this video ten years from now. And there might be another tour happening yes, at that moment exactly. in time, and they might be coming somewhere close to your place. So go check out the Greg Cock website at this point. That's correct. Or, yeah, gregcock.com. Yes. Exactly. Okay, and yes. you'll find all the dates for yourself, the Cock Marshall Trio, correct? Uh, yes. All the shenanigans happening. Um, all right, awesome. Uh, well, I'm really glad that it finally happened and that you're here. As am I. Uh, we're going to be talking about yeah some of the music that you're making, some of the gear that's coming with the music that yes. you're making because yes. you've released some very interesting things. Um, so yeah, let's uh, let's start with the basics. All okay. Right, so you're a creature of habits. 
you've had uh, you've had the the tea in dif different flavors of tea guitars. Yes, uh, this is the this is the newest one, right? This is the, the yeah. Pink well, one. this is um, I've got two Reverend signature models now, yeah. and what I always wanted was a T style guitar, but with a slightly larger body. Yeah. So it's not radically larger, but it's about, it's between two and 3% larger all the way around. Mm -hmm. So it just looks more proportionate because I'm six, seven. Every time I play a regular size guitar, people are like, is that a three quarter size guitar? And I'm like, no, yeah. I'm just a Sasquatch and heat. <laughs> and so all the guitars look kind of small for me. And they were willing to use the Fishman pickups on their guitars. So that started that. And then, uh, so I've been playing these, I don't even know how many years now. Uh, I remember, I remember when you did, you were here the first time with Chris and you, you guys did the video together. You did a couple actually, you did one for the amp, you did one for, and we'll get, right. back, to, we'll get back to the amp. Yeah, yeah. But the, uh, the, at this point in time, so that must have been five years ago at this point. Uh, so it's yeah. like only yesterday. Yeah, we'll link the videos, by the way, that were done at the time, and that was for the, right. the Fishman set and uh, the amp. Yeah, the, the Greg. The Greg, right. yes. the Greg. We've got the new one. What is it? <laughs> well, it was kind of interesting because we kind of joked, uh, me and, uh, and Chris from, from Caw, because as I used to always say, my favorite amp would have one knob that says more. Yeah. And then I come out with, you know, with Caw, with, with the Greg, and it's got 50,000 knobs <laughs> on it, right? I just, yeah. But, but it all, it all makes sense. And, you know, yeah, for sure. It's, it's, it's all stuff that, it, the basic, the intention of the amp was that, I wouldn't need to bring anything else. And I, was yeah. just, and, and I did that for the longest time, and I still do it. If yeah. I'm going to do a throw and go, I'll just bring that, that amp and a cord, and I'm done, right? Yeah. Um, but then I also had the idea of, I, I, there was a, a couple of little Fender amps over the years that I always really liked. One was a Pro Junior, which mm -hmm. literally has a volume and a tone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then there's the Blues Junior, uh, which I like, but the, the problem with both was is that I loved what happened when you cranked up the Pro Junior, but it, it would kind of sound a little boxy, right? Yeah, yeah, that's what, that's 10 inch, like. Yeah, it's a little 10 inch yeah, speaker, yeah, yeah. but it sounds great. And I recorded a bunch of records using that thing, like the original Spank It, that's a Pro yeah. Junior, you know? Oh, sick. And, um, and then I was doing gigs for a while where it was, it, I would, uh, I needed to be quiet, I was doing this TV show, mm. um, uh, the Brett Favre show. If you're a football fan, Green Bay Packers, Brett Favre had a TV show for a while, and I was the house man. I was kind of like the uh, Paul Schaefer type character. Nice. Don't look for it on the internet. Anyway, uh, but I needed <laughs> we'll, to be quiet we'll, on we'll, set. We'll link it. If <laughs> we can. And I used a Pro, a Pro Junior. So the Pro Junior's thing was is it had reverb, mm. uh, but I would use it as more of a clean amp and then hit pedals on top of it. Sure. So I kind of wanted an amp that could do both things. Yeah. If I wanted to just crank it up and go, we could, or we could use it as a platform for... I hate that pedal platform, yeah, pedal but, platform. But, but, but that thing you know so um that became our next experiment uh with uh the fellows at caulk amplifier a great name for an amplifier too. absolutely a great name period, period. it's there just it a great name so basically it, the controls are pretty simple um it's got a uh, a volume and a gain mm -hmm. which of course we call gristle and more as, as you do uh and it's got a single tone control it does have the ability to have a little boon, uh, uh, a gain boost. Yeah. So something to just, you know, get it a little bit more grisly, if you will. But it's got a beautiful sounding reverb as well. Yeah. And it can be either 4 or 12 watts. Uh, and, and it functions, I mean, that opening salvo we just did, I was on the 4 watt mode. Yeah, and I'm on the 12, but we were still like... Yeah, it's, there's parity. I mean, yeah. it's loud. It's yeah, yeah. Oh, it's super loud. Yeah. And, uh, and when I, we did the session with the boys, I mean, I was playing it in the 12 watt mode with, I mean... I mean, a lot of times when in this band form, I'm using two amps. And yeah, they're yeah, both yeah. loud. Um, but it, it's it's a gigable amp for sure. Yeah. And uh, right. but what's great about it is is that it sounds great clean. It sounds great with just a little bit of hair, and then using pedals on top of it, or you can just crank it up and use the volume control yeah. on your guitar and do that old school thing. <laughs>
and, uh, and it's got one single EL34 too, but apparently you can swap those out for different things depending on your, on your taste. I have not okay. investigated that yet, folks. Well, I'm, we'll put the, well, because we have the creators. Yes, right there. they are so here, we'll, lurking. We'll put, we'll put the science on the screen at that, right now. Right, right exactly. Now. <laughs> the science will be unleashed. Exactly. No, um, but it, I, I was legitimately surprised by how, like, it's a 112. First off, that's already... Right. It's a 12. It's slightly bigger. Yeah, because we wanted to get rid of that boxy thing. And right? it works. It yeah. works so well. Like, because you you can... I the, the thing that got me was the headroom. Like, the amount of headroom. Like, I'm used to playing Princeton, a Princeton-inspired sort of amp. So we're looking at the same kind of ballpark, 12 right. watts or something like that. But... I really struggle because I do love pedals and I do a lot of pedal demos on uh, right. different places and platforms and stuff. And really struggle to keep them clean. Like right. clean enough to get the low end from the speaker, loud enough to have all of that and then stack gain on top. Right. So like, and that was just headroom all yes. the way. You could keep it clean up to 12 o'clock. That was loud enough for any drummer. And then it goes into right. grizzle. Right. <laughs> well, what's nice about it too, when it starts to load up, it doesn't do... Uh, what I love about the caulk amps is that they don't get shrill on the high end yep. and they don't fart out on the low end. Yep. It's just, it's more of a, it's a warmer crunch when it happens. And uh, I, I just, I love it. I see now that your board has changed since your previous. Well, what's interesting rundowns. is that this this board I've I've got m with Klaus, my uh, agent and tour manager, who lives in Ah. And, ah. Sorry, God bless you. Um, <laughs> he's got my old pedal board, and uh, I couldn't remember even what I had on. I was like, Klaus, what's on that thing? Um, and so I brought over my Gristle King pedal, and I brought over my mini vent. Hmm. Uh, my jam pedals, Wah, the Wacko, and then I've been using that little Timmy pedal. Yeah. Which I which I like quite a bit, um, and the only reason why I'm using a pedal board at all uh, is because during COVID, uh, because I was home and I was doing like four or five live streams a week, I got yeah. bored. So I started taking out the pedal board, and I was like, "Oh, it's nice to have a little bit of delay." I don't like to use a ton of delay, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I like a little something. And then I got used to the fact of, you know, having a little slapback on kind of all the time, but barely audible. And then there, you know, when you're using an analog pedal. Uh, especially, you know, these T-Rex, I don't have these at home. I use different stuff at home. I use the yeah, jam yeah. pedals, uh, Delay Llama at home. Yeah. So uh, that that's going to be your US, like, 
Yeah, that's you my just rig, rig at home. and then okay, right. yeah, yeah, cool. And then, but I just I use the reptile uh, for a little bit of slap back, but it also boosts the signal just a little bit. Yeah, they tend to do that. Yeah. And then uh, the replica I have set for a, a longer delay. So if, here's just the amp. Now again, I'm in the four watt mode. It's just giving a little bit. If I turn the volume down, like. Now, if I hit that little button here, the magical button, it beefs up a little. All right. What I love, too, is the reverb. The reverb doesn't get spazzy. So a lot of times good. on yeah. Fender reverbs, if you get it past two and a half, it yeah. spazzes out. Yeah. And this one's just a nice... Now here's what happened if I just put that uh, reptile on. Boost the it's game just like, a little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit, and there's like a doubler effect almost more yeah. than anything. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now if I hit, there's a clean boost on the Gristle King. Beefs it up a little bit more, uh, yeah. right? And then on top oh, yeah. of that, I got. What I like about the situation with my different caulk amps with the, the Greg and now with the little gristle is is that they sound great with pedals, or I can just plug straight into them and they sound yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. And in the studio, I, it's kind of weird. I like the sound of the overdrive and the amp better than the pedals, yeah. but pedals hit different live. For sure, yeah, yeah. And so you just get a, you know, especially when we're in this format, uh, it's very intense, and Hammond sounds glorious, but it's, it fills up a lot of space, yeah, and yeah, I, sometimes yeah. I just need to heat, I need to feel the heat. For sure, and like, and. The, the gain structure on the amp is going to be so like sort of volume dependent as well. Right. That, you know, you want to be sort of level and be in your spot in the mix all the time. And you can't really just crank right. everything it, if you it, need exactly. like a little bit extra juice, you know. So exactly. yeah, everything's got its place, definitely. Exactly. So I find myself bringing the pedal board out. And I usually, I've been using two amps as of late. Yeah. Because I like the, the, the ventilator, which is my... Which I like quite a bit, and then so good. I use that, and then the, the harmonic vibrato on the on the Greg, on the Greg amps yeah, sounds yeah. fantastic. And if I do one amp clean, and then one amp with the, it's like it gets that kind of wet dry thing where it sounds like it's in stereo. It oh, plays tricks the on the ears. Vibrato is yeah. like yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so it's really really cool. It sounds magnifico. I absolutely like. I absolutely agree with all that. With my the the head of that our head camera person, the head camera chief, uh, and I have always said, like, if I can only have one amp, that would be the Greg. Right. Out of all the amps that we've played in the studio, because it sounds really good, it, sound, it works with pedals, but mostly because my two favorite things in the world are reverb and harmony. Yeah, and harmony for exactly. Product. And like, if I have to have just the amp, no pedal, no nothing, that's that. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. got to be that. So, and what's great about it, too, is that... Um, there's a level control in the harmonic vibrato. You need that. Because, you know, a lot of times you hit a, uh, like a, a tremolo or, or a vibrato on an amp, you just this lose like a little. Step, yeah. But now you can actually boost it a little bit, so you get a little something-something. So it's, it's awesome. Absolutely awesome. I, I get different things, and I try them out. Yeah. Um, I always come back to kind of the same things again. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I did... Um, uh, I really like Andy Timmons' new delay pedal. The Halo. Yeah, Halo, yeah, Keely. Which is great, but my foot is too damn big, so I'm hitting both buttons at the same time. <laughs> that was my only problem. It's like, yeah, Andy, yeah, I love yeah, your yeah. pedal. I, I already Velcroed it to my pedal board, but my big ass foot needs yeah. it. So I need to have I need to have the two, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was my only problem with it. Uh, 3D did, print some spacers or something that you can hit from way out of the board or something. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then I there's different overdrive. I mean, I've always loved the the Jetter GS124, it's yeah. one of my favorite pedals. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but that does a certain thing. Yeah. And what and I, I used it on one record, and that was like my main. I, I diverged for a um, a period of time from using the Gristle King to using that because it did kind of something that's in the middle of a fuzz and an overdrive. Mm. It's kind of right in the middle there. Yeah. And worked really well with the volume control. Um, but it was always just a little too dark. Uh, and, and, but anyway, so I, then I went back to Gristle King. And, like, it's it's yeah. just my thing. I love the way that your influences is, in terms of artists, not necessarily sounds, but like artists and playing styles have sort of blended into what you do with the, the chicken picking and the bends and the, the volume swells and all of that good stuff. Uh, are they still like some, what do you listen to right now that makes you go, oh, Oh, I might, I might try and incorporate some of that. Uh, you know, it's, I listen to a lot of old stuff, to yeah. be honest with you. And um, that's not to say that I won't hear some new stuff and be inspired by it. But yeah. I, it's, it's weird what I get inspired by. Um, sometimes it's just like a, uh, some of the way wigg someone wiggles a chord a certain way. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Or, or just a voicing. Yeah, or, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Or it'll be a, a certain flavor. But to me, um, you know, I have a tendency to go back and kind of... Um, Uh, keep my arsenal fresh in terms of all the stuff that initially inspired me because things can wander a little bit. And the, and the thing that inspires me the most is, uh, you know, kind of the uh, the magical kind of spooky guitar stuff. You know what I mean? Mm. Where you listen to it like, what's going on here? <laughs> it, it, it has nothing to do with, with, I mean, of course, there are scales involved. Yeah, and yeah, like, yeah, but, yeah. but there's something transcendent yeah, happening. Yeah. And, and, and all those original influences from me were, you know, Hendrix and Cream Era Clapton and, You know, Jeffrey Beck and mm. Dwayne Allman and Dickie Betts. And, and we just did a, uh, um, a tour of, uh, uh, well, first of all, I did, I did the Allman Family Revival thing. I did three of those gigs yeah. this past uh, December. Uh, that was my first time doing it. And Devin Allman and I, you know, he, we reached, I, I sent him kind of a funny text because they had posted the tour dates. And I sent him a funny text that I can't repeat here. It was, it was, it was humorous. And he goes, just for that text alone, you're on the tour. Right? So <laughs> nice. I did three of the and it went great. And we're going to do more stuff. And we've been talking about doing all kinds of different stuff. Yeah, But, awesome. you know, I, I love the Allman Brothers. Um, and, and my biggest, all of my music that I do and all the music that I am influenced by is all highly in the moment impro improvisation, you know, and it's all, the stuff's always different. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, uh, you know, tempos are a little different, durations, are, it's all, it's just highly in the moment music. And that's the stuff that I've always liked. And that's like, I was a huge Hendrix fanatic and it's, and Cream Era Clapton, all those guys, they would never think of doing the same thing live yeah, as they did yeah, on the yeah. record. You know what I mean? And it's become so different now. It's like people expect things to be exactly like they're on the record. Yeah. And, and I'm like, well, no, that's. It, it can't be about control. It's got to be about complete freedom. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Absolutely. Absolutely. And no one typifies more that that idea than like Dwayne Allman. That was yeah. his whole thing. And uh, so I've been kind of going through a, 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 an Allman Brothers resurgence. And then last week when we got done, I had to do this Allman Brothers. I didn't have to do it. They asked me to do it, and I was glad to do it. Kind of an Allman Brothers tribute thing on the Joe Bonamassa cruise. And Maggie Rose, yeah, great yeah, vocalist, yeah. was in, she keep, said, hey, you want to do keep it? Keep the blues alive. Exactly. We did that in Jimmy Hall from what Willie sat in with us and in uh, Jimmy Vivino and Ariel Posen yeah. and, and it was just fantastic. And um, so then on the way home, we were driving back after doing some gigs in Florida. I was like, we're going to go right by Macon, Georgia. We should really go see the Allman Brothers Big House Museum where they all lived. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. And I'd been there years ago and I went to Rose Hill Cemetery and saw, you know, Dwayne Allman's grave and Barry Oakley and so on. But I've never been to the big house and I really wanted to go. So uh, we're like, great, we're, we got a day off. We're going to go to Macon. And uh, so I look online and I was like, shit, they're closed on Wednesdays. And so I was like, I'll call Devin Allman. So I text Devin. I was like, Devin, do you, are you friendly with the people at the big house museum? He's like, absolutely. What do you want to do? I go, well, they're closed today and I really want to check it out. And so he gets back to me. You're in luck. The guy's a fan of yours and is totally geeked out. <laughs> like, awesome. <laughs> So we went and we got a, um, you know, just us, the guys in the band, and, yeah. and uh, Richard from the museum, and got a private tour of the of the place. Uh, it was so so awesome. And so as a result of that, I've been kind of like every night. I do the deep dive, and I, I love bootlegs. Yeah. And so I'll listen to a different bootleg every night. And there's a, there's actually a bootleg of them playing in my hometown of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, in September of 1970. And uh, you know the audio is always funky, but you know. 
Fun of I was always one of those kids where my records were scratched to hell anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. people like, how can you listen to that? I'm like, well, I'm listening to the music, not the scratches, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, because I'm always going, you know, trying to learn stuff. <laughs> uh, and just, you know, when Dwayne Allman was on, I mean, and that's one of the things, there are so many great slide players now that are technically really awesome and they can do all this new pyrotechnic stuff and it's beautiful and I dig it. Uh, but Dwayne, it's like, it was hit and miss. When yeah, he was yeah. on, it was spooky. You know, but there'd be other time where the intonation was funky, but that's because he was fearless and going for yeah, stuff. Yeah, for sure. And uh, and so I really enjoy listening to the different stuff because, man, when he's on, it's scary time. Yeah. You know, but when he's on, I mean, as I said, you know, intonation could be weird, and plus those guys were on different vitamin regimens. If you know yeah, what I'm talking yeah, about, yeah, yeah, yeah. There were some I heard, interesting I uh, <laughs> uh, solutions, but that, if that, you will. Like that, that kind of. That, that just makes me think of you this morning, like coming in at 10, setting up and we're like, okay, let's, let's play some songs and what, and like 11 or something, picking up the slide, like no warm up, no nothing. You pull out the slide and you go. And like, if I'm playing the slide on a video and you guys know that you've seen that, it takes a minute. It takes a minute for me to go into slide mode and you're like, all right, yeah, I forgot that. Or like, if I go into like an open tuning or something like that. And every time yeah, I hear, the Allman Brothers or, or uh, you know, Derek Trucks and uh, sure. the people that came in and, uh, right. and did the thing as well. Uh, like just the, the, the ease of picking up the thing and going from one tuning to the other, one type of playing to the other one. Like, and yeah, that's, that's something that I aspire to when I see musicians like you and like coming in with the band and just first day. Yes. Done. Well, thank you. I and, mean, yeah, we, we've been playing a lot. I mean, it's kind of an interesting thing. Uh, I've been obviously playing for a long time and, um, but you know, when I was my son Dylan's age, he's 28. I mean, that's when, uh, I was 28 when he was born. Right. Mm. So I kind of went from being a gigging musician all the time to be in a position where, okay, now I got a kid. And then a couple of years later, I got another kid. And then next thing you know, I got four kids. <laughs> um, and so it was kind of my decision to make a living as a musician. I had to do different things. Yeah. But the one thing it always had in common is I always found myself in, in different positions where I could pretty much say and play whatever I wanted, mm. uh, all within the confines of, you know, if I'm doing a Fender thing, obviously I'm going to have to talk about the amps and guitars I'm using. For sure. But I can do it in my own way. They just let me do my thing. Yeah. Uh, same thing with all the different things I've done over the years. Um, but I've always had my own band and I was, I mean, I did, I had my 10,000 hours in before mm. I ever did anything for Fender. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Playing in bands, putting out records. That's always been my thing. Mm. And the other thing was just what I had to do. I enjoyed doing all those things, but they were, I always assumed that people, well, you know, I'm actually, it's always been about the band and playing music because I, I never really wanted to be a sideman. I mean, I did it. I did sessions. I know how to play nice with others, but I always wanted my own band because when you have a band, and that gets to gestate and become this other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not just, it's like, you know, a lot of hotshot players will put bands together with other hotshot players. And mm. it's always great because they're all great players and they know how to play together. Yeah. But it's never really that other thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That only happens as a result of people playing together over and over again and becoming a particular identity, at least to me anyway. I No, I, I, I fully agree. I, I only had that other thing once. And yeah, when you know what happened, you're like, yeah, yeah. You're like yeah. this is something weird. It's yeah, like yeah. you all do things at the same time and, and then it just becomes this yeah. other thing. So I finally got into a situation um, and it was right before COVID, actually. We finally got a, a decent booking agent in the States because yeah. that's the hardest thing. You know, it's like you can get record deals, you can get all this kind of stuff. But if you don't have a booking agent, you're SOL, right? Uh, and plus, it was always so hard for me to book the band in the past because, you know, is it blues? Is it not blues? No, no, it's too blues. No, it's too rock. You know, is it instrumental? Is it vocal? You know, what is it? Blah, blah, blah. And it was always a pain in the ass. You know, agents be like, well, is it blue? Well, you're not really blues. Do you have a record deal? Well, yeah, I got a record deal. But, you know, that's an instrumental record. I mean, yeah, but we do some vocal. Freaking nightmare. So then we find this agent, sees us online. He's like, I hear you don't have an agent. I, he goes, I mostly book country bands, but I'm a guitar player. I'd, I'd love a chance at booking you. So we started booking shows and we realized that with all the different stuff I've done over the years, um, you know, you name it, the instructional stuff, mm. Fender stuff, you know, Wildwood, you know, caulk amplifiers, Fishman, whatever. Uh, there's enough people that know what I do that they want to come out. Yeah. And so they started booking gigs. We show up, we set up and people come and they're like, boy, you know, 
online is one thing, but live, it's unbelievable. I'm like, yeah, well, that's what it's always been about. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the thing, you know? So it's been really great. And you know what the other, they don't, they don't say, is this blue? I mean, they come because they just want us to do our thing. And then COVID happened and we're doing four or five live streams a week. And people are like, now they, you know, we started hitting the ground running really about six months ago mm. or about it. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and people have been coming out to the gigs and like, you know, we watched your live streams nonstop. It would help us get it through the, you know, the, the lockdown yeah, and so yeah. on and so forth. And then they come and they see the band and they bring friends with them. They're like, what is this? So, you know, initially it's, it's guitar player guys that come out, but then the young people here and they're like, Hey, this is groovy shit. You know, we could dance to it. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's like, there's a jam thing happening and there's a power thing that happens with the three of us. You know, that people are like, oh, my God, what's going on here? It's like, yes. Yeah. So we're feeling this great momentum that the States have been going great. We've been drawing great crowds and it's getting bigger and bigger. And so uh, it's just so that. fun to just show up and play That's as opposed so to, to you. you know, I mean, and I enjoy everything I get to do. I never wake up in the morning like, oh, my God, I got to do a video today. I, I, I enjoy doing it all. But when you know that you're going to show up at a place and all people want you to do is play, yeah. it's freaking awesome. Yeah. I can, yeah, I can only imagine. I'm glad that there's still some bands like yours just making people realize that live music is about doing things different, about that cohesion. Like if you if you'd show up and play exactly the record, I'd be bummed. Right. Like I'd really be bummed. Right. But right. you don't. You don't. And it's a whole thing, and it's amazing. And if any of you got the chance to go see the uh, Cock Marshall Trio or Greg or just anyone slightly related to him or his son or just <laughs> anyone anyone in the vicinity, go go Come do on. it. Yeah. Do yourself a service yeah. and go uh, go see them. Um, thank you so oh, much. Pleasure. It's also awesome. I'd love to get you to wrap up the video with some more sounds and some. Okay. Like if you want to go through the amp one more time, Lil sure, Grizzle yeah. by Cock Amps. Everything that we can list in the description, we will. So go check out all of that. Uh, Greg, thank you so very much. My pleasure. You know what might be kind of fun? What? Is I'm just going to turn around and kind of just reconfigure the amp a little bit so it distorts just a little bit without the pedal board. Please. Let's do that. Please. I'm just going to sneak back here. So right now I've got... Uh, I've got the gristle, which is the gain, at about uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, the tone's about 10 o'clock. The more is on like 2 o'clock, which is the master. And I've got the reverb on about uh, three and a half. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna crank the gristle a little bit more and I'm gonna put the tone at about noon. It's good, because now we have notes for the edit as well. That's yeah. a professional, right? And now I've turned the, uh, I've turned the master down to about 11 o'clock. And uh, let's see what we got. And I do have the extra switch engaged. So what's nice about this is that I can run the volume down on the guitar for my clean sound. <laughs> 